Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Welcome to the Mind Your Own Podcast with Aaron Sorensen and Sasha Durkin. Where we stick to sports, except when we're not. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Mind Your Own Podcast. I'm Aaron. I'm Sasha. And we were just both talking about how Tuesdays, when we record these episodes, it's always on a Tuesday. Now, understood that you might be listening to this on a Wednesday, mm. a Thursday, Friday, doesn't matter. But we are both just commiserating about that Tuesdays feel not worse. I don't want to say worse than, but Tuesdays are monday than Mondays. Yes. I am like a big believer that Tuesdays are always more Monday than Mondays themselves. Agreed. Well, and I think it's because like... <laughs> over the weekends you do so much stuff and then Monday gets here. So you're playing catch up and doing all of, and there's usually quite a few meetings for me on Mondays. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of my time is taken up on Mondays setting up for the week. So then by Tuesday, it's like, uh, okay, now it's actually the work week. (laughs) Yes. Tuesdays. I actually made a TikTok about it. Just telling people I'm like, yeah, Tuesdays are just always notoriously like, I think it's because Mondays, like you said, they become heavy with meetings. They become heavy with just like catch up Mm -hmm. and a lot of things that need to get done, get pushed to Tuesday. And that's at least for me, because I was planning on, I was telling Sasha, for those of you who have started watching these episodes on YouTube, obviously you can still listen on Spotify, Apple podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. But if you've started watching them on YouTube, I was telling her that I would like to start coming in to record. And I was Mm -hmm. planning on it today And we'll kind of talk about the reason why I did it here shortly, but it's just been like, honestly, busier than intended. So if you are watching this and I pause every so often, um, I cannot for the life of me figure out, we have like one gigabyte internet. It's like really good internet. Um, But they have also been doing a ton of uh, work in the neighborhood, Mm -hmm. trying to do the fiber optic cables and all of that stuff. So I think that is what's causing some of the issues that we've run into. So if I pause, just hang tight for a second. I'll be back. Uh, You can still hear me. I just like pause sometimes on very unflattering um, moments and it's great and fine. It's not a big deal. It just is what it is. And it could be too that, um, well, not to be too inside baseball, but my office (laughs) is not hardwired and it's because like the lines are not labeled correctly. And so we're trying to figure that out too, which when we have to do remote should help, I hope. Um, But yeah. That's so a good time. Apologies to everyone for it's fine. Kind it's, of technical difficulties. Eh, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. Um, no, I and you know, this week we are what kind of has created just not bad chaos, just good chaos. If you are a Hill Varsity subscriber, or if you're not, you should become one because we are in just like the thick of yearbook preparation. Like we're well, we're getting really close to the end of it all being finalized, sent to the printer. So this is just like crunch time. Whenever people go, oh, it must be the off season. I'm like, yeah, there's Mm -hmm. not, there's not like right now, there's really outside of track and field at Nebraska. There's nothing going on as of this last weekend. Um, But there's still like, this is crunch time for the yearbook. And that is where I'm at. My, my story is um, I'm getting that wrapped up. We're just, you know, deciding the cover shot, like, there's so many little pieces that are like just almost finalized. Mm-hmm. And I told Sasha we to kind of keep this episode light because I think last week, you know, was pretty heavy. Um, we did kind of mention something within that episode about athletes being more than athletes. And so mm-hmm. I had told her, let's talk about that because it fits really well with where we're at right now with the yearbook and just kind of everything going on. Um, really like shameless plug really quick. If you want to become a subscriber and guarantee your copy, you can head to hailvarsity.com uh, slash subscribe and go ahead and, you know, guarantee that you will receive your copy. Now, if you're listening yes. to this in like August, uh, at that point, <laughs> it will already be like out and available. So just go grab a copy, I guess. But like, if you yeah. want to become a subscriber to guarantee your copy, you should do that. Um, but before we dive into that, I just want to say one quick thing. And I actually, I actually like really appreciated this, um, surprisingly, (laughs) but last week when we have shows like we did that are 
a heavier topic that mm-hmm. dive into, you know, really nothing that sticks to sports. Like it is sports adjacent. That's the thing yes. that I always tell people is like sports are political sports are um, so there's so much to sport yeah. Um, to sports uh, that, you know, sometimes you make people uncomfortable and there were some people who were uncomfortable by that conversation and uh, said some not so nice things um, about me particularly. And the one thing I will always say in response is um, if you show me respect, I will always be willing to hear where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. When I don't feel as willing to listen is when you are throwing insults and just being mean for the sake of being mean, because I can't get past your approach then. Like I can't get past you wanting to insult me because you don't agree. So I, I just want to say if I'm here for it. Totally, totally up for it. Um, but if you're, you know, looking to just insult me, that's just, you know, I'm too far into my career and too, uh, too old Mm -hmm. for that. Like I have found, my boundaries on social media is just not allowing people to speak to me in any which way that they want to any longer. And I think, you know, 10 years ago, that would have been very different, Mm -hmm. but I'm not that person anymore. I don't feel I owe anyone anything that if you don't agree with me, that's one thing. And we can talk it, talk it out if you want. Um, But if you're going to throw insults or be mean for the sake of it, um, unfortunately that's where that conversation ends because I am not interested in disrespecting you and all I ask is for the respect on the same. But, you know, when, when you do get, sometimes it's like, you know, when we have a tough episode and we talk about those tough conversations, it's, I don't expect everyone to agree. And when I see people give feedback that is like, you can tell it struck a chord with them. Like, you know what though, that's not necessarily a bad thing because Mm -hmm. the, sometimes my biggest growth comes from a point of, uncomfortability when I'm uncomfortable and people push me into a space where I'm like, I don't really want to address this, but I need to, that is where my biggest growth happens. So all of that to say, whenever you are listening to an episode, if you agree or don't agree, whatever, we are always open to healthy, respectful conversation. Um, You can always email us at mindyourownpodcast at hailvarsity.com. But again, all I ask for is respect and we will provide that respect back to you as well. Like if we are all on the same page with respect, right? we're good to go. Um, and really that's like the only, the, we don't have to agree on everything. Obviously we're not going to as human beings. We all um, come from different walks of life. So we have different perspectives on certain things. But think about like any conversation you've had in your life, whether it be with a family member, a friend, a partner, um, and the conversation starts off in a disrespectful way. Think about Mm -hmm. how like that makes you feel because automatically in a certain way, it's going to cause the other person involved in the beginning of this conversation to feel a little bit defensive um, of themselves. Because if you're just throwing out insults, that's not like the beginning of a conversation. You're just throwing out insults and being rude. Um, Being rude doesn't get anybody anywhere. Um, And just wanting to be right for the sake of being right also doesn't lend itself to good conversations or an actual conversation. No. And, you know, I think that's, you know, kind of fitting into what we're going to talk about today, because the Hill Varsity yearbook, like I said, it arrives in June. Um, You have until June 6th. So again, if you're listening to this in August, uh, that's cool. Uh, But June 6th is the deadline to subscribe and guarantee your yearbook arrives in the mail to your Mm -hmm. home. And the thing that I've kind of found that's related to that is, um, you know, athletes, especially when they first arrive in college, like when they're freshmen, they're wide eyed Mm -hmm. They're and not all of them, but so many of them do arrive wide eyed. They're so trusting. They look at everything as very exciting. Um, and it, it's really hard because for me, I sometimes see that light diminish a little more every year and it's Mm -hmm. disappointing 
not because of anything that they do, but they're, they're coming from a place where they've been disrespected. People, people are just like ruthless. And so what I, why I feel that that is really disappointing for us as both consumers, as media, whatever, is mm -hmm. that, and also like, I don't understand just if you hear the nice little hum of my like computer in the background, it just loves like, it'll be great and fine. And then it just decides <laughs> this podcast starts and it's like, you know what? I'm having a moment. So it's cool. But we also, to go back to what I was saying, we miss out on so many stories from mm -hmm. athletes because to be honest with you, they don't want to give a lot of themselves because they're fearful if they give too much what kind of things will they get back? Mm -hmm. And I think a lot over my career of the athletes where I wish that I could have told more stories about them. I could have done more to um, highlight them outside mm -hmm. of who they were on a field or a court or a pitch or whatever. And one of the individuals that comes to mind more than anyone else is J.D. Spielman. And I think about him a lot because people know him as he, his, his, father was the GM of the Vikings when he was at Nebraska. People he was mostly because of his family, but JD really quickly shied away from doing much media. And I always say that like, I'm really sad by that. And I'm, and I, the reason why is like, he clearly kind of, you know, it wasn't his thing. He's talked about it. It's, you know, he yeah. shared that that's not his thing before he, you know, he has made references to his own mental health and protecting that and, you know, protecting himself. And you have to respect that. But there would be these moments like the yearbook when we would have, and this was pre COVID, but the big photo shoots where all of the players would come through and you'd get to take all these photos. Um, I do remember the last one we had, we got to do like that. It was 2019 and he showed up with these really like cool contact lenses in they were like yeah. red and these grills and it was just like you saw his personality and in that moment he's, he's taking the photos and he's with his friends um you just saw you saw jd you just saw jd yeah and i think about that sometimes where i'm like he didn't owe anyone anyone to tell a story about himself but i do think like I wish that a space had been created for him. And this is not me condemning Nebraska, by the way, mm -hmm. this is just fandom in general. And this is just sports in general. It's not even just a direct, um, it's not me even just speaking about fans. Um, it's just the way that like the world of sports exists, that mm -hmm. it can be a lot. But I think, you know, so many, so many players put up with being just disrespected and one of two things happens. They either get used to it and they just somehow block it out or they shy away from mm -hmm. giving anymore because they don't want people to be able to attack more than just whatever they do on the field. Yep. And you do find people who say, good, they should only focus, like, just focus on the game, just focus on this. But I think that's actually a really, I think that's a really, to me, that's sad because... Yeah. When you're looking at this roster and you see all of these faces, isn't it sometimes nice to know a little bit about the person that this is this human and look at what their how their life has brought them to this moment? Because when we talk about representation, imagine if you're a little kid out there and you're hearing about the path that, um, you know, X, Y, Z took mm -hmm. to get where they are today you might relate to that and go, yep. wow, I can become that because listen to their story. Yep. If you're somebody like Adrian Martinez who lost your mom at a young age and you're thinking, how do I move forward in my life? You may, you may look at him and go, well, look at what he's been able to do and you feel a connection. Mm -hmm. So that's why, like, I, I just, I, I'm, I don't know. Like when we were talking about that last week of like how I want to see athletes for more than their production in their game. Mm -hmm. I understand there are people who don't and I can't, that is what that is. Like, I don't, I can't, you know, if you just, that's if you, all you care about is the game itself. Okay. But I guess my, my biggest point is, is like, let's be respectful and yeah. let's still provide that space for athletes to share who they are, to, 
be who they are and be whoever that is away from sports where we're not t- yelling at them to stick to sports. Yeah. Because to be honest with you, most of these athletes, the NCAA says it, most of these athletes go pro in something other than sports and that dumb commercial every year. Yeah. But yeah. like, it's true. Most of them are going to go on and become a hundred different things. Mm-hmm. So why are we boxing them in to be something that like you can only focus on this thing? Right. I think that that when you, as you were talking through that, um, something that with the NIL stuff really is like intriguing to watch evolve is seeing these athletes be able to pursue the things that they do enjoy doing outside of the sport that they're playing, having a concert, being able to have an art show, being able to do stand-up comedy if they want to, being able to have a podcast and highlight the people that they are off of whatever court field pitch that they're playing on, on a day-to-day basis. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that I don't go on Twitter a whole lot anymore just because I, for my own mental health, I just, um, I don't know. (laughs) It's like, it's a little too toxic for me. So I try not to. And if I do, it's, I'm making a joke or I'm promoting a podcast probably, but um, being able to see people, you know, illustrate who they are as, as people outside of the sports that they're playing, I think is super important. Um, even writing poetry or being able to be on TikTok um, and being able to make some money off the things that they do enjoy doing outside of the sports that they're playing. Um, and the reason I brought up Twitter is because I haven't really seen a whole lot of people be pissed off at athletes being able to do those things, which in a way, I mean, I'm sure there are people out there, but that's why I said, I don't know, because I'm not on Twitter that much. But um, I, I think that the, the feeling that I've gotten is that most people don't have a problem with that. But they do have a problem with, for whatever reason, whether it be an article or um, an interview in which they're asked a question that isn't about the game. That's, it seems like when people start to have issues with it. It's like, why is, why is this one thing different than this other situation? It's still highlighting the person as a player and giving them space to be who they are. So what is, I just don't understand what the problem is or why people have issue. Yeah. And I think it also depends on the topic of which they're being asked. So it's like, if it's something about a social justice issue Mm -hmm. that they care about that, that triggers a lot more uh, response. Um, But if it's, but if it's like something about like their favorite food somehow, like, yeah, you'll get the person who's like, I don't care. Like, I don't care about this, but like there's not, quite as like negative a reverse bonds. Mm-hmm. And I think that goes back to what I was just saying about like healthy conversation, healthy respect, where like, you know, I, th- I think if you can step back and be like, yeah, maybe this person and I don't see eye to eye, I always go back to this moment. So speaking of the yearbook, following Adrian Martinez for the day that I did in 2019, it had just concluded his freshman season. He was in his, he was going through the spring ball heading into his sophomore year, um, following him around that day, I will like just the most impactful thing for me personally was listening to his conversations with his teammates and his friends. And they were like having conversations very freely. They did not care that I was there. I don't think it would have mattered. Like if, you know, it just was one of those things where like, they just immediately viewed me as like, okay, she's kind of a fly on the wall. It's fine. Like she's just here. And they just lived. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But like listening to their conversations were really, really interesting because one of the conversations that came up between Adrian and Cam Jurgens is they were walking to a class and this is pre NIL name, image, and likeness. And they were talking about NIL and they're talking like Adrian was kind of like, asking cams so this is what i'm talking about with healthy conversation and respect for one another is the two of them i at the time i want i want to just like i want to be clear that this was in 2019 both Mm -hmm. of them have had plenty of time to grow in their opinions their thoughts whatever but all they were talking about is like adrian was trying to say like well, you know, we are already getting scholarships, you know, we're getting all of this. And Cam was like, but Adrian, let's think about the world that we each know. We come from very privileged places. We have all that we need. You know, for us, it's not about needing the extras, but some of our teammates do. Some of our teammates do need the ability to yeah. make money beyond their scholarship or their 
um, you know, getting certain things paid, for, like just having like the bare minimum paid for through the school and watching this conversation happen between the two of them was like so amazing because it's here's these two, like at the time, 18, 19 year olds um, trying to make sense of what yeah. would eventually become NIL, not a hundred percent knowing where they stand on it, not a hundred percent knowing where each other stands on it, but having a conversation where they walked away from it, respecting each other, uh, probably having a better understanding of where the other is coming from because they didn't get defensive with each other. They mm -hmm. didn't start coming after the other person. It was very much just like, here's my viewpoint. Here's where I'm coming from. Here's what I'm thinking. Um, so yeah, I just, yeah. I, that was a really impactful, um, moment for me to like witness that because it's like this, this is how this should be. And mm -hmm. here are these two individuals where it's like, I'm sure they would be, have been happy to have that same conversation with just about anyone. But now imagine that conversation. If one of them immediately started being like, you're dumb. Why do you yeah. think that you're an idiot? That's stupid. That conversation stops right there they suddenly start going nope i'm not interested in having this conversation anymore because you're throwing insults yep. and so that's when i say to, like to people where i'm like you may not always agree with things and honestly everybody all up in arms about the balloons in the Ugh. stadium thing yesterday the amount of insults being thrown around over balloons it's like if you want to have a conversation like I watched, and this is the stuff where it's like, I watched one person say, you know, this is great to me. I think that this is long over. Who just came and started attacking that person being like, all right, you're, you're just woke culture. You're this and starting attacking this person for feeling this way. I'm like, what is being accomplished here now? Right. All you're doing is this person is no longer going to be interested in having any follow-up conversation mm -hmm. with any of you because you're, you're just attacking them. Right. And I, it, something that always just, and this isn't just explicitly here in Nebraska surrounding, no, it's you know, not. Nebraska sports. It's, it seems like to me, anytime there's any kind of an attempted change or change to tradition, whether that tradition is a good thing or a bad thing, people are so resistant to it. And I totally get it. It's, tr it's tradition. We've always done this. That's great. But also things change. Like, you know, there's, there's traditions and families that, that go away or evolve over the years. I mean, there's hell, there's, I almost swore. I didn't want to bleep it. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> um, but the, I mean, hell there's traditions with myself that I don't even do anymore because one, it doesn't fit the season I'm in or two, it wasn't a healthy thing to be doing. Like, I won't get into the semantics of why it is good or bad because it's, it is what it is with the balloon thing. But like it, <laughs> when it comes to traditions, people are just so resistant to changing any of those things, whether it is good for one reason or bad for another. Um, and I think that that kind of ties into our conversation about, you know, uh, having athletes be able to be human beings and humanizing yes. them, um, uh, because traditionally in the past and, and leading up to the last few years, we haven't normally done that unless it was like, a, I wouldn't want to say an expose, but unless it was like, you know, a, a cover story of some kind, that's mm -hmm. the only time you'd get to know athletes. But now it's kind of changing a little bit. So the tradition is changing and people are not liking it, but like anything else, as things evolve over time, this becomes more and more and more and more normal, which is why we continue to have these conversations. Because when you continue to have conversations surrounding something that may be, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for? Controversial. Even. Yeah. And it's not even controversial, but no. you know, people try to make it controversial. The more we have these conversations and it becomes more and more normal, just like when we were talking about the the female NFL referee, the next time it happened and the subsequent times it happened, it wasn't as shocking. It wasn't as controversial because it's started to become normal. So the more we have these conversations and the more we mm -hmm. actually have discussions with athletes, not just about them, it becomes more and more normal. And it's not as controversial and people don't have such a visceral reaction as they can to some of these things. And I just want to point out too, oftentimes athletes become really, they, well, they don't 
they become aware quickly of how people react to them. Yep. And a good example of this is so Cam Ybarra, um, who is a softball, who is a softball player, and all I can think of is Grand Slam Cam, which is ba- like the best nickname ever yes. for someone. Um, so she was our Q and A subject for the February issue. February, February, or March. Mm-hmm. I it's months mean nothing to me. Anyway. When I initially started interviewing her, I always tell people with the Q&A, it's not, we're not going to really talk about, you're, we're not going to really talk about your game. We're not going to really talk about it, but let's dive into other things. And what I find a lot of times is they default to just talking about their game. So like she immediately, like right off the bat, started talking about the season, what she's looking forward to. It's like, it's the stuff that like they've become used to, like, mm-hmm. this is what I have to talk about. And Almost there is a, there is a, yeah, that is yeah. a place for that, by the way. Like there yeah. is a place for that. She was literally getting ready to go up to the podium on a Monday morning to, or on a random day, I can't even remember, to talk about the season ahead. So like that there's a, when we talk about time and place, time and place yeah. for everything. But it took me about 10 minutes to get her to start talking about her love of travel. She loves to travel. And here's some traveling things that uh, some of her favorite places to visit where she has gone. Um, It took about 10 minutes to get there. But then it also turned into what does she want to do with her future? Oh, she wants to be a sports psychologist. And oh, the people at Nebraska are are what inspired her into that. She wants to be a sports psychologist, like the sports psychologist for softball. These are the things where it's like, that is the stuff that makes her who she is. Mm -hmm. What she does on the field and being named Grand Slam Cam is amazing. She's an incredible player and we should talk about her as a player and everything that she does on the field there that absolutely should not be ignored either. But what a shame if we never got to learn that she wants to be a sports psychologist and she loves to travel. Right. Yeah. And it's like, uh, I think that I, and I said this last week, but I think it does everyone a disservice when we don't allow those conversations to happen and evolve to that point. Like, Mm -hmm. it's just like anybody listening to this podcast, unless you know, Aaron and I personally, you probably don't know the things that we're super into. And you wouldn't know that without asking questions or being willing to have those conversations. You know, it's, it's like with anything in life, but I think especially when it, when it comes to athletes, because of, you know, tradition you can you only are the sum of your parts on the field well that's not what makes up the whole person you know we don't know what they're into off of outside of the sports that they're playing but that's also an important part and can be the the key to why they are successful on the field is the things they're doing off of it yes i just i that's been always my goal so like when i like when I think about the stories that I have told for the yearbook in the past. So some of the people that I have done stories on is Mick Stoltenberg, a defensive lineman, Adrian Martinez, a quarterback, um, DiCaprio Boodle, a defensive back, um, Ben Stilley, another defensive lineman. And then you'll all find out this year's here soon. Um, But like, I'm going to talk about DiCaprio Boodles really quick because DiCaprio was always really interesting to me. He was, um, he, he just something like, he just always was somebody where I was like, I want to tell a story about him. I think there's just something where you just like get a vibe where you're like, I really want to just tell a story about this person. Mm -hmm. And here's what happened is this, the, the yearbook obviously comes out in June. This started in like September of the year before I noticed he was wearing this backpack. It was a spray, spray ground backpack that had that, like, it's kind of like reminiscent of a fire fighter jet. Those ones that have like the mouths on mm-hmm. it. And I was like, that's a really cool backpack. So I just like commented to him. I was like, Hey, I like your backpack. He's like, well, actually Chris Jones gave it to me, a former Nebraska player. I was like, interesting. W- what do you mean that Chris Jones gave it to you? And he's like, Oh, well, when Chris Jones was getting ready to graduate, he was just like, I'm going to pass this on to you. And I was like, that's cool. So let's dive into this. Now the backpack itself was like falling apart. Like (laughs) it had clearly gone through like iterations of uh, use and the, the backpack itself was starting to tear around the top. And I don't know, I just kind of saw this as a little bit of symbolism where I'm like, here's this backpack that has been passed on and all of these, you know, just kind of what does, what does this 
ultimately mean about this backpack? Well, by like November, like October, November, DiCaprio filled me in that he finally had to order a new backpack. <sighs> he ordered a spray ground one, but he planned on keeping that original backpack from Chris because he's like, you know, this was something that he had given to him, had passed on to him. And it meant a lot to him. So the headline of this story ended up being mm -hmm. where DiCaprio Boodle's been and where he'll go. It was created into three parts. Part one being passing it on, part two being making it count, and part three being spaghetti with peanut butter and jelly, which spaghetti with peanut butter and jelly is basically like him saying like, I want to be able to take something that might not seem great and make it amazing. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a whole thing. Um, so the idea is like, for me, I was like, he was carrying so much, so much pressure in his life to be great, so much pressure. And it kind of was symbol, like the symbolism of this backpack just kept coming up. Mm -hmm. So for me though, I'm like, I want to dive into who he is. And that was talking to people who knew him really well. In fact, I even talked to the coach, Brian Stewart, who recruited him to Nebraska, who was no longer at Nebraska at that mm -hmm. time, but like he was willing to talk about him. And the first time he ever saw him in like, got to speak with his family. And I walked away from that having such a deeper understanding of what made DiCaprio Boodle the player he is now. Mm -hmm. If you are somebody who's like, I want to stick to sport, I'm going to tell you why this story mattered. Because this story told you who DiCaprio was from the moment he started, his dreams were set into place. He knew what he wanted, but you now know how he got pushed by his dad. How his dad was basically like, if you want to play football, you're going to have to be like, you're going to have to be running and doing all of this other stuff. Like his dad challenged him. DiCaprio started challenging himself. He was told he was undersized. He was told he would never make it. He challenged people. He told them, I'm going to run the fastest 40, you're going to see, and then did it. Did. Here's the thing. All of this story leading up to his offer at Nebraska and what he did at Nebraska is why he is currently out, he is currently with the Kansas City Chiefs and has worked his way off of the practice squad. I need to stick to sports. This story is exactly what you need to know about why DiCaprio is who he is and how he became who he is mm -hmm. and what – his work ethic is like, this is the stuff where it's like, if you chase these stories away, if you don't let people tell them, you have no idea how they became who they are. Mm -hmm. You have no idea how they got where they are. You have yeah. no idea. And that's the thing is like, I get so excited. I always tell people, I don't cheer for Nebraska. I don't cheer for teams. I cheer for people. As a member of the media, I, I honestly, it does not matter to me who wins or loses at the end of the day. I mean that it does not mm -hmm. matter lose I'm, this is wild with some people nebraska losing does not ruin my day because it just doesn't matter to me yeah I, i'm sorry it doesn't it i have to tell a story about the game no matter what outcome happens so my job doesn't change now when they're winning people are happier and nicer so it is more fun but right. i've always said i'm a fan of the people i'm a fan of the individuals i'm a fan of the people who make the whole thing run I now, as a Kansas City fan myself, just absolutely get so much joy out of, like, one, because he's a really good person. But knowing, knowing his backstory has given me such pride for DiCaprio Boodle. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes of how prideful his family is. Like, I think of his older brother, who, believe it or not, played football at UNO for a little while. Like. Yeah that's like the wildest part is he had connections to Nebraska and all of this stuff. But like, I think of his older brother who like would come and just like celebrate him, how he has to be watching these games and just being so excited for mm -hmm. DiCaprio. This is the stuff where it's like, we shouldn't chase these stories away because we want to stick to sports because then you right. lose the opportunity to get to know people. And like, at the end of the day, isn't that the most important part? Yes. Yeah. At you least can't. I think so. <laughs> In my opinion, like you can't, you can't have a roster full of people who have come from all these diverse backgrounds and have, you know, all of these different stories on how they got started or got into something. Um, and then ultimately, if you take it a step further, that helps um, make up the culture in any locker room because you have all of these diverse stories. You probably have a lot of similar work ethics, but everybody got there on a different train. So I think that like, if you take it all encompassingly, it I'm like getting super excited because that like story gave me chills because when you think about it, 
ultimately at the end of the day, each person on that team is an individual and they all have different passions and they all have different, you know, like I said, stories on how they got there, but they're all interesting all the same, you know? Mm -hmm. And then you have the reason a culture works is because there's got to be some kind of similarity. And then you kind of understand the dynamics and inner working of a team and how, I mean, that's the stuff that's super interesting to me. Understanding those team dynamics Mm -hmm. is important because then you kind of understand some other things that may or may not happen in one way or another, but you can't have that story or that background without having these conversations. Yeah. And I just, and I think of like, whenever anybody asks me, what's the favorite, my favorite story I've ever written, I always tell them it's whatever is like the most recent story I've written, but I have been so fortunate to collect. I always say like people have trusted me and given me the opportunity to tell their stories over, you know, essentially a decade of my life. And I think of the very first story I ever got to tell. And this was so meaningful to me. And (laughs) I remember I had just, I was a year out of college. Um, I was blogging and just kind of like writing for anyone who would let me. And I had just pitched the idea of an interview with Brandon Kinney, wide receiver Brandon Kinney. And he agreed. And I will never forget meeting him at the stadium. It was like blazing hot out that day. And he was like, oh, do you just want to go sit in the practice facility, which is not air conditioned? Mm -hmm. And I was sweating profusely because I was like, one, nervous as heck. Um, But two, I was also, it was very, it was like 105 degrees that day. But I will just never like forget his graciousness and his willingness to sit there and just tell me about his life. He had a son. Um, He was just telling me about like who he was and why he came to Nebraska. He had gone the junior college path, all of these things. And like, I will be honest, probably my worst interview because that's how it always works. You get, get better at interviewing every single time you do it. But like, I probably did not ask him all the questions I should have. Um, I probably did not push hard enough on things, but like I walked away from it with a better understanding of who Brandon Kinney was. And I think about that with every single story I've told since, like the most recent story I just told for Hale Varsity, which our May issue is focused on Megan Whitaker. She's a um, golfer on the women's golf team at Nebraska. And she turned an IL deal. And she didn't just do it for herself. She did it for 18 other athletic programs at Nebraska. And also on top of that, had the whole thing donate a portion of the proceeds to teammates. Mm -hmm. So amazing, amazing work by her. But here's how that whole story came to be is I'd originally called her to do an interview for a QA and a where I was like, okay, same thing as like the cam q and I'm just going to call her. It starts out, it always starts out with Q&As where people are talking about their seasons, how things are going. And that's great. But I always want to try to dive into things that have nothing to do with it, like mm-hmm. with their, their game itself. So we get to a point where I'm like, all right, so in your free time, what do you like to do? And she's like, oh, you know, I like to hang out with my friends, blah, 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 blah. If I'm not playing this, I'm like, okay, when you are not in school, when you are not golfing, when you are not like just like sitting in your um, apartment, what do you like to do? She's like, well... I like to get ice cream. I was like, (laughs) what do you like? Okay. We've hit on something here. She's like, Oh, I love getting ice cream. Like if my grandparents are, you know, if my grandparents want to go get ice cream, I get ice cream with them. Um, and then found out she'd started a Instagram series called the 19th scoop that, uh, she would go and try ice cream at all the different locations. She was golfing at always gets vanilla so she can fairly judge each ice cream shop versus another. And then she creates these videos and she tells you all about it. Um, That turned into a conversation with former Nebraska golfer, Kate Smith, who was also on the cover of our magazine. And I got to tell a story about her. Kate was like, why don't you take this love of ice cream and do something with it? And Megan started emailing ice cream shops in Lincoln and 402 Creamery responded. And the rest is really, truly history. If you, are able to check that issue out. You can go check it out at the Hill Varsity Club. If you're in Omaha, you can go actually head there and grab, like grab a copy, become a subscriber and read it. Mm -hmm. Um, But those are those things where I'm like, I, I am such a fan of Megan because of like, yes, she's an incredible golfer and she, she may end up going the professional route or maybe she doesn't, but I don't care for like, I mean, I do like, I will be so excited whatever she does, but like, she's so cool. 
and mm-hmm. so amazing that she took this thing like we all are sitting here yelling about nil and the transfer portal and how it's ruining college athletics and here's this young woman who literally found a way to create an nil deal with a local business and bring around bring along athletes from 18 different sports in nebraska yeah. and also make a donation to teammates like let's stop focusing sometimes on like like take a moment and be like holy cow look at yeah. what she did so those are those things where I'm like, if we aren't telling stories about athletes and if we aren't digging in, if we aren't asking questions beyond how'd you feel today's game went, how'd you feel you played today? If we're not taking the time to ask more than that, we are doing a disservice to both the athlete and the consumer. Yep. We are doing a disservice to the fans. And there are always going to be fans who go, I don't care about any of this. I just, I just want you to stick to sports. I just want to know. It. Cool. You know what? And there's going to be athletes that you try to, you try like for the record, similar to JD Spielman, there are athletes that I always sit here and think there is such a deeper story here where I would love to be able to like tell that story, but they yes. don't want to. Right. And I will always forever respect their right to keep anything that they want personal to themselves or if they're just not comfortable. And I think that's just the reality is some of some of these athletes are like, you know what, I don't want the potential, you know, people getting mad. I don't really mm-hmm. want people commenting. I don't really want that. And I respect yeah. that. It's, it, it bums me out because I wish I could tell everybody's story. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can't like, that's when we talk about reading the situation, there's yeah. a time and a place. That is why it's so important, like to do your, just do your job. And yeah. I don't know. I just, I just always find it really interesting when people kind of do that, they're, they're, that whole thing of like, well, I don't care about this. And it's like, okay. okay. <laughs> like, uh, like, no then one's don't. forcing you to read it. <laughs> yeah. Or the, when, you know, when people comment on that, well, I don't care. Well, you cared enough to comment. So either right? you're just being mean or rude to be rude or like you actually do care, but you don't want people to know you. I don't know. It's very bizarre to me. If you don't care, fine, then don't consume whatever it is that, you know, whatever article or whatever, then don't (laughs) like it's that easy. I think sometimes people look at sometimes stories. I think there are people who sometimes see these stories and they think like, oh, you know, I think it maybe changes their perspective on an athlete and maybe they don't want their perspective changed on them because they find out like, I'm going to just book last year but it's because it's a it's a part of it's a part of who he is Mm -hmm. um ben stilly when i wrote the story in the yearbook it was ben again about his choice to come back for a sixth season um part of it is ben had made the conscious decision to become a vocal ally for his black teammates and friends at the university of nebraska he was speaking at black Lives matter um rallies he spoke at um he was showing up at events for his teammates and his friends. Um, He is not a person who typically is comfortable doing like public speaking. Mm -hmm. It's just not his thing. But he, for him, it was something that was very important to him. There are people who are like, what does this matter to the story? And it was like the luster of Ben Stilley was ruined for someone because he was passionate about, you know, being a true ally Mm -hmm. for his teammates and friends. And that was the thing where it was like, he didn't care. Like in that case, like he really, like, it was like, he did not care if you like, heck, some of the people who got upset, I'm like, if you want to go test Ben Silly, he could like slam (laughs) all of us to the ground. And like, we would not be feeling too great. Um, But it's like, you know, I think, I think that that was a part of who he was because, and it is a part of who he is because when you think of the fact that I just said, he's not a public speaker, he doesn't like, he doesn't like attention. Mm-hmm. He doesn't like being on the cover of the yearbook was really something that came from a place of the relationship that I had formed with him over his career at Nebraska, where he trusted, he trusted Hale Varsity. He trusted me to tell mm-hmm. that story and to put the cover together. And, um, but he was just not somebody who like loved that kind of attention. Yeah. Um, so when you think of the fact that he was willing to speak so openly with um, people about, his support when they they had that Black Lives Matter uh, rally outside of Memorial Stadium and he was willing to get up there in front of um, a lot of people. 
that says something about him. It also, mm -hmm. to me, says a lot about who he was as a leader, who he is as a leader. It said a lot about who he was and who he is in the locker room. Um, you, you start to see whose people are through these, these stories and through these moments where it's mm -hmm. like, it might make you uncomfortable, but you know what? You now have a greater and deeper understanding of who Ben Stilley is. Yeah. And yeah. isn't that the goal at the end of the day? Right. But. Yeah, I, you know. I think that understanding the fabric that makes up the person as a whole, um, one, has always been interesting to me. Um, I think that you, like you just said, like you gave, you have a way better understanding of one, what they're willing to share, but two, of, of just the person themselves. And I think that that helps, in my opinion, um, like any sport that I've seen or cheer for, it helps me enjoy and further respect the things that they are doing um, mm -hmm. and how they show up. Um, that's just, that's just me, but it's always been that way, you know, like whether it be I love hockey and like understanding that um, and then being able to respect and appreciate, even if I don't agree with something, the fact that another person is willing to do this, that, or the other thing, or has gone through this, that, or the other thing. Um, it always helps me. Even when a person, a player leaves, Yep, I will follow that person's career just because of, you know, stories like the ones that you guys do at Hill Varsity, to be honest with you. Like I, I love them because I really love, I just love understanding people in general, but then to be able to follow um, these athletes careers when they go on or whatever they end up doing, I feel like it, it gives you like an inside look into, you know, the, the person as a whole. And then I, I, you know, you feel like you have, not a relationship with this person, but a better understanding of who they are. And it makes it easier <laughs> to, to cheer connect. for. Yes, for sure. Yeah. I just think if I can offer nothing else as we, you know, kind of wrap up a little, you know, this week's episode, like I think, again, going back to kind of what we said at the beginning is you're not always going to like, support, appreciate everything that everyone does. But when mm -hmm. we can come from places of respect and at least, um, you know, respecting people enough to give them the space to be who they are um, and to be accepting and to be empathetic and to see that like our realities are not everyone else's realities. Like I said, I get that like there are a lot of people who don't agree with the way that I see things and I am willing to hear you if you yeah. come from a place of respect. And so many of these athletes are as well. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, the the yearbook is going to drop in well i really encourage you to check it out if you are not a hill varsity subscriber um you can head to hillvarsity.com slash subscribe um get information figure out all the benefits of also becoming a subscriber um but this is this this is probably one of the more I always say my most favorite story is the one I've most recently written. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, this one's really special. I, I'm really excited for people to get to see this issue and read the story, not only my story, but all of the stories that will be in this. Um, I do want to just wrap this up also with a quick note from Laura, who sent us an email. Um, I just want to say, she said, it's so cool that we're on YouTube. I really appreciate all of you who think this is the best thing ever. Cause I have to be more aware of my facial expressions at all times. Um, but she said, you know, she just needed the reminder to speak positively to herself because her mental health is in a valley right now. And Laura, I just want you to know that I'm I'm with you. Um, it is just a, it is just a time right now. So just please all, everyone know you're never alone. Um, yeah. I know that sometimes can feel a little hollow when we can't say that to your face. But she did bring this up. The Hill Varsity Club is now officially open in Omaha. Yeah. We do need to have a mind your own podcast um, meet and greet at some point where we can all sit down and have a drink and just chat about life. Um, yes. So keep, we'll, we'll discuss, we'll get some ideas we'll rolling here. Together. She said that she will buy us a drink. I think we need to buy her a drink. Yeah. Um, but I do appreciate Laura and everyone else who have continued to tune in. We've actually gained some new listeners recently that have let us know that they've add, added this show to the rotation. Please just Amazing. know how much that means to us. Yes. Um, keep sharing it. I understand that sometimes our topics don't vibe with everybody and not everyone like loves what we have to say, 
that's okay. Again, it all comes from a place of respect. If you can respect us, we can respect you. Tough conversations are good, but tough conversations also help you get to know people. Yes. So it's, it's just always remember, it's a, it's not a bad thing to have your, your thoughts and your viewpoints challenged because that is how we grow. And that is how we learn about ourselves and about others. So a thousand percent. Hell, uh, I don't think that I would be half the person I am today if I wasn't willing to have really hard conversations. Some of those really hard conversations have completely changed my perspective in a positive way. So, Oh, same. I always tell people <laughs> I am not the same person today that I was 10, 12, 15 years ago. And that is a, a good year thing. Ago. <laughs> a year ago, for sure. <laughs> Since the beginning of this podcast, I listen to old podcasts. I'm like, ooh, but that's <laughs> a good too. thing. Yes. That's a good thing. Exactly. Well, you can always email us at mindyourownpodcast at hailvarsity.com or tweet at us at Aaron Sorensen at Sasha72. We both could use some goodness on Twitter anyway. So tweet yeah. at us. We'd love to hear from you. Um, we will be back next week with more. Um, hopefully I will be in studio, mostly so I can yeah. see Sasha in person. <laughs> um, if I'm not, that means um, my life is in shambles. <laughs> it won't be in shambles. But we'll get this yearbook like squared away and then yeah. I'll be in. It'll be great. It'll be great. It'll be great. Looking forward to it. Yes. Well, thank you as always for listening. We will go back next week and uh, go be nice to yourself this week. We'll talk to you later. Bye.